and welcome to Bones and Company. I am your host, Emily O, and I am joined by Bitsy. Good to see you. Welcome, Good to see welcome. You too. I'm happy to be here. I feel like, even though we have stuck to our schedule and we still put out new episodes every Monday, you and I actually haven't recorded in over two weeks. I agree with you because we recorded early, so then so many things happened, and I'm like, wait a second, the podcast has no idea what's going on. The podcast has no idea what's going on. And we also have, I just want to set the scene, if you're joining us on video, then you can get a visual, but it's Sunday evening, so we really waited till the last minute because we wanted to yep, be we This did. is a live update. Um, it's raining outside, it's really cozy, we have on sets, we just decided to be a little bit more casual, and we are ready to talk, we're ready to share, and we are ready to catch up. Are you ready? <laughs> I just stare at you, because no. I'm ready. <laughs> I have my note, my notepad. I should use my um, in good company notepad. But Elizabeth, that is the smallest writing I've ever seen in my entire that's life. That's just how I write. Read that. That is the cutest handwriting. <laughs> I want to cry. Your handwriting always gives me such like nostalgia. I don't know why. why? It just like reminds me of when you were little because it like. Like you're the way you write hasn't matured. <laughs> no, the thing is, is it has. Really? And that's the mature version. It looks. It still looks like a little kid's writing. Well, no, but it's like, guys, it's not bad handwriting. It's just No, like, it's not bad ha handwriting. It's very whimsical. It's so you. Like, oh. It's such a you Thanks. handwriting. Of course. I love when you bring notes to situations. And the funniest was earlier today when we were in the car and you pulled out your little notes and you opened <laughs> yeah. it and you're like, okay, this is where we are today. Let's look back at what we wrote before. <laughs> Hilarious. So let's um, jump into some bows and lows for, honestly, the past two weeks. This can be pretty open-ended because it's been okay. a minute. I can think of a few lows, but the biggest low, the biggest dip in this valley was this today. It was at five o'clock. I went to Whole Foods because I am going to start making lunches to bring into the office for my internship, which we'll get into in a little bit. 100%. But I um, started following this girl on TikTok and she puts pickle juice and pickles and everything. And I love pickles. So I was like, I'm going to go get some pickles. So I traipsed over to Whole Foods and I dropped the entire pickle container in the aisle and pickle juice <laughs> went all over me, all over the floor. There was no recovering from it. And so I just, you know, put the pickles back. It wasn't a glass jar. No, it was a plastic. So then I had to get, you know, the cleaning person to help me. and. It was really embarrassing. It's so funny because you were like, oh, please come with me to Whole Foods. And I was like, honestly, like, I'm just too tired. Like, I'll let her have her alone time. And thank God I didn't because you would have embarrassed me in front of everyone. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, but, like, if you had been there, I wouldn't have dropped it. Oh, it was because you were maybe carrying too many things. I was carrying too many things. I was reorganizing the cart, and then it just slipped out of my hand and all over me. Yeah. All over me. I still smell like pickles. You were actually gone for a short amount of time, so for it you to felt like eons. wreak so much havoc, it was it happened quickly. Yeah. Um, what's your bow for the week? Okay, so my bow for the... Mm, okay, I'm just going to go with the first thing that pops in my head, which is the rooftop party that we went to for our friend, Julia, who's moving away. So devastating. Sad, devastating. That's actually also a low. But um, I love being on a roof. I love seeing the city. I loved the vibes. And we just danced on the roof all night. And we had, there were tacos. There were tacos, there was pizza, there was ice cream. Good food, good friends, good fun. Good company. We yeah. were in good company last yeah. night. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yours. I would say that a low for me is, I think I'm shadow banned on TikTok again. So, you know, that's never like a fun game to participate no, no, no. in. And um, that's also not good for business. No, 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 not at all. <laughs> so that is so Super duper concerning. <laughs> <laughs> very, very worried. Not only is it like an emotional problem and you know, just an individual thing, it's also like a company wide problem. <laughs> so we sent out an alert this week. We got IT on it. <laughs> it is just, you know, it's not looking good. I've been posting and it just nothing is hitting and I am becoming extremely frustrated. <laughs> Like, <laughs> and I am frankly done with the entire application. Um, I don't know what to do. So Elizabeth, our token Gen Zer, I love I'm not Gen Z, but I don't know. You just like have this essence in you mm. that really works for TikTok. I was like, here's my phone. Like, just 
do something because I was either going to, I don't know, just curl up in a ball or low bar. No, <laughs> no low bar. I thought that was actually like the good part. Like and then the bad part would be like you throw your phone out the window. <laughs> yeah, it's just frustrating when you want something to do well. Right. Like, I feel it's odd because it'll do well on like Instagram. I've had this conversation before. I'm not going to get into it, but that is the low of yeah. the week. And but luckily you have a designated young person on the job. <laughs> yeah. I'm here, you know, like I can help you. Right. So anyway, um, so many bows though, just like in real life, you know, the things that actually matter, not that TikTok doesn't matter because it does, you know, help the wheels of my business continue to turn. And if you're listening to this, I would greatly appreciate you giving a little like a comment or just, I think we all would as a family, just so we can <laughs> stop hearing, Oh my gosh. <laughs> You know, and I just think for your mental health as well, if you got a few more views, <laughs> that would be great. It's just very frustrating. Because you're putting a lot of effort into these I think that's what's videos. so sad about it, is that I'm putting an effort in that it's like, not only not anyone seeing it, but I'm losing followers. <laughs> right. So, so it's not, it's not a wash, it's actually a negative. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm not going to dwell. That's not what we're doing. Mm -hmm this week is not in 2023 not not in the summer of 2023 it's a non-dwelling summer so anyway lots of bows um last weekend i was in nashville yes and since we had pre-recorded that episode on monday you know went up so we didn't really get a t chance to touch upon nashville and i did already post a full vlog so if you want to see the visual i recommend you going to see that because that was pretty much the entire show or check out tiktok you know you oh, oh, did a or really <laughs> but please please tiktok maybe start with tiktok for like a little preview um and uh, yeah no so so fun i went and visited my friend abby who we went to miami together she lives in nashville and works in nashville and we just kind of were was like you know the first weekend of june worked out for everyone and so we i flew down there on thursday and i was there till sunday wow. and it was a wild time it was literally the wild wild west no, literally. Well, well actually, not south. literally because I was you're in not south, the West, but, but you know yeah. what I'm saying. So um, it was a marvelous time, and I really liked Nashville. I had never been out in Nashville ever. Right, because the last time you were there, you were 12. So. No, I was there in the fall, but we just oh. stayed in the fall. <laughs> so it was, um, it was more of a hotel trip. And this was fun because Abby like really got to show us Nashville, and we did a pedal bike on... Because there were four of you. There was four of us, yes, and then her roommate, so five of us for the weekend. Um, we went out on Friday night to Broadway and, and Lord heavens, I did not know what hit me. It was, it's cool how they block off the street though. I really did like mm. that because then everyone could kind of walk in the middle. Um, that's nice. That's typically what happens when you block off the street. <laughs> that's really kind of. <laughs> no, they stayed on the perimeter. So it's kind of like a bigger sidewalk. So everyone knows. No, it felt like a block party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it felt like a block party. Um, and then Saturday we went on a pedal bike and I had like low expectations for, not that I didn't, I was like, oh, like fun, but I didn't realize how fun oh. it really. And did you have to pedal? No, there's a motor on the, on Cause the. Cause you are known to not pedal. Yeah, no. I, we'll I, be on a tandem <laughs> and I'm like, why is this so heavy? It's dead weight in the back. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I have my phone. Or like if we're coming. <laughs> or kayaking or, or anything that involves kind of like a group project. Um, but no, it actually had a motor. So they were like, it's just for show if you want to pedal. Oh no, this is what it was. If you, we were going up a big hill, they needed everyone to pedal. How many hills are there? A couple more than you think. They knew like the hills that needed everybody's <laughs> effort. But I was like, this Pull is- it together. It's fine. There's enough people here that it can pedal. So, but no, it was really fun. And, and we literally were just driving around in the same circle, like listening to music. And it was the same, like, two streets, and it quickly caught on. It, and I was like, right. hey, I just saw you guys. You're in a parking lot. Wait, <laughs> yeah. no, no, seriously, we met in the parking lot, we ended up in the parking lot. You're not getting things by me. <laughs> okay, this is our fourth loop in the parking lot. <laughs> exactly. So, and then we ended up running into um, some Miami boys as well, Ooh. who happened to be in Nashville. <laughs> who happened well, howdy, howdy, you. <laughs> Sipping my metaphorical hat. Yeah. Um, no, Look what the banjo <laughs> dragged in. <laughs> The Western trip, so we ended up running into them, which was really fun. Um, and we like hung out all weekend, and yeah, we were just you know at Honky Tonk and Jason Aldean's and Luke Bryan's. I mean, they're all pretty much the same type of bar. What was your favorite? I liked the first one that we went to. I was gonna say there's live music, but there's literally live music in every bar, and not just every bar. Like each bar has like four floors, and on each floor <clears throat> there's live music. So. Well, that, that's a lot. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. Like at some point there was a lot of stairs. we need a DJ. There, no, it was all live. Yeah, 
Were they trained or were they? They were trained. I mean, they were all aspiring. Or was it like me getting on the stage? No, no, it wasn't like you. They were definitely like aspiring artists and musicians. And you know, there was guitar. It was great. It was it was a fun time. We went to some oh the stage the first day on Friday that was really fun. I don't know. <laughs> you weren't there, so you don't know. I wouldn't get it. <laughs> in Ohio. So. <laughs> yeah. so anyway, very fun weekend. So that was your bow. <laughs> Yes, that was my phone. Thank you for circling yeah. back. What did you do while I was in Nashville? So while you were in Nashville, I went to the Zach Bryan concert. It was a very, wow. <laughs> it was a very weekend. country weekend. I have been dying to go to a Zach Bryan concert since probably mm, five months ago. <laughs> Maybe seven. Um, <laughs> pretty just Because I just you know, discovered him. That's basically the same amount of time. Totally. Yeah. I just discovered him and uh, my one of my friends from school, but also home. So it's kind of like a home and school friend. So just a friend. <laughs> so she's just a friend. <laughs> she um, got us tickets. Her other friend came. We had a really fun time. And um, the Zach Bryan crowd... You know, for a while, I didn't think he was a real person. I thought everyone was making a joke about it I because can see that. it's Zach Brown Band and Luke Bryan. Those are, you know, two country artists, obviously. And then you put together, you put them together, and you get Zach Bryan. Yeah. So I thought everyone was just twisting my arm. Yeah. They were. Yeah. I saw him in the flesh. Um, <laughs> He's a real man. Yeah. So I showed up wearing <laughs> <laughs> this. G Bro, Liz, right? Liz. G Wiz Liz is right. This bright fuchsia. It was a hot pink. It was a hot pink. Pleather jacket <laughs> with silver fray, you know, like the fringe. fringe. But they were silver diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, this is, I'm either going to wear this to the Shania Twain concert that we're going to, this Taylor Swift dance party I'm going to, or the Zach Bryan concert. And I was like, oh, let's do Zach Bryan. Let's pick that one. Wrong <laughs> choice. <laughs> it should have been for Shania Twain. Or the Taylor Swift dance party. Like, Okay, so I show up downtown, and I'm like, wow, everyone is like in muted tones, and like, you know, very country, and yeah. hats, on, and I'm like literally in bright pink. I didn't see another bright color the entire night. I finally just took it off, like once I got inside and took my pictures, because I was like, this is getting embarrassing. You said it was, because like, was... normally sometimes like when we walk into a situation and like you're maybe too dressed up, you just kind of like own it. Like, I, that doesn't bother me. But when you're the only person who's in a bright color and people are staring, like it was... I don't understand how you were so off base. So off base. Couldn't have... I was so far from the base, the base was a dot to me. It was awful. <laughs> So I did get merch, which I love. <laughs> merch is my thing. I love free t-shirts. Yes. And so I got one of those and I put it on and I looked a lot better. I just fit in more. And then as we were leaving, I was like, Regan, will you take a picture of me like as we're walking? And this guy's like staring at me and I'm like, what? Like what? <laughs> and he's like, were you about to jump into my arms? What? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, no. <laughs> Did you want me to jump into your arms? Like, it was like, kind of so weird. Was he weird? Was he weird? He was cute, but he was fine. But I was like, no, I'm not gonna jump into your arms. Could you even catch me, you so, lanky man? It was like, so niche. It was so niche. And he was like, oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm like, okay, bye. So this seems like quite the experience, this it concert. Was. And then I stayed overnight at Claire and Connor's. The hotel. The hotel. <laughs> And I stayed in the office on my air mattress. Um, and then the next morning, we talked till like 2 a.m. Yeah. And then the next morning, they made me coffee and then they kind of kicked me out. Did they have plans? Yeah. Well, I was intruding. I was. Oh, I'm sure you were intruding. I just, like, no one was doubting that. <laughs> hey. <laughs> morning. <laughs> Hi everyone. <laughs> but I loved the concert. I loved, a, I love live music. Something about Elizabeth is that she loves concerts. We are the complete the opposites. Yeah. I don't like concerts. Like I am constantly searching for concerts. It's, so I mean, I loved his songs. Um, now I'm listening to them again. Here's another fun fact. Like, so Zach Brown's songs are pretty slow. Like there are few fast songs. So I'm over here like just fully dancing to these slow songs, and it wasn't a dancing crowd. <laughs> it was not a dancing these crowd. These are not your people. <laughs> People. No, but I had a great time. So that's what I did when you were gone. Uh huh. And then on Monday, I started my internship. 
yes, please share with the group how your first week of your internship has gone. It's fantastic. <laughs> I'm doing work, I'm in the city, I'm with friends. It's really great. It's fantastic. There was somebody, I asked everyone on Bose and Company to kind of just like, let's just hone in, like let's, you know, center ourselves. What do you want to hear from us? And somebody asked, um, the question that you planned an event for 600 people, why don't you clarify that? Oh. You didn't You didn't actually plan the event. Okay, I didn't put on the event. You thought of the idea. So, uh, yes, I thought of the idea when I was at opening day with Dad and the guy who's in charge of the Greater Cleveland Partnership, which is kind of like the Chamber of Commerce for downtown Cleveland. And Dad was like, why don't we get the Greater Cleveland Partnership interns and my interns together for a party? And then I just, you know, being so out of pocket as I am. I just scream out, why don't we have a party for all the interns in Cleveland? So then we start, we talk for probably like an hour. Yes. And dad's like, we can get sponsors, we can raise money, all this stuff. And the guy is like really into it. So dad gets an email like a week later and it's happening. Like it's being put on. So that just happened this past Wednesday. When registration closed, the day of the event, there were 672-ish in crazy in Cleveland signed up so we went to the event and they had the mayor speak um, lieutenant governor no I don't know there was another speaker and they had um, the Cavs mascot was there they were giving Cedar Point passes to everyone like every single intern who registered got a Cedar Point That's day crazy. pass That's crazy. you got a ticket to the Guardians game right after food drink live music games Tons of prizes. People were winning Vitamix. They were winning um, money. Like, <laughs> out of control. Cars. Cars. No, 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 no. no, no, no. no. <laughs> um, and so it was a really fun time. And I mean, I knew a bunch of people because they're all, you know, relatively my age. And right. We're and all the guy, in the city. And the guy who put on the event, who you thought of the idea, like came over to see pictures. Yeah, we did. Pictures. We were talking. Like, oh my god, I love you. It was on the news. It was. It, what, yeah, it was the, the news, news was there? Uh, yeah, I made it on the news. So did Brayden. Brayden on the news? Yeah, Brayden was <laughs> jumping for um, a free t-shirt and he made it on the news. Wow. Yeah, so it was really exciting. There was like photo booths? There were photo booths, y'all. <laughs> Me and the like um, flipping carnival. <laughs> it was amazing. And like what other city would be able to do that? Like Chicago can't have a party for all their interns. There's it's so too many. big of a city. It's too busy. Too yeah, too big. But also like so fun for like the people who don't live in Cleveland who are interning like this. Yes. For them to come, it's like a great way to keep people working there. Like to come back. Like look, we have parties all the time. The city is really fun. The city is alive. <laughs> the city was so alive. It was oh my gosh, you could feel I'm sure there was a hum. Totally. So just to clarify, you didn't like put on like the, the the guy took over correct and organized it all he gave me credit <laughs> that was that hard. that's all i care about was yes. the credit. yeah yeah so that was on tuesday wednesday wednesday and then right after we went all of us to the guardians that was game. a huge day you had i was so exhausted club. another club no sleep office another office lunch party guardians game yeah. no sleep Literally no sleep. Um, okay, so tell us about how you've been enjoying your internship. That was another question that has come through. Thank you for asking. <laughs> um, it's been really good. So we work Monday through Thursday, like 8.30ish to 5. And um, it's great. You know, we were working out some kinks, learning different, um, you know, what is it called? Like databases. I don't know. Software? Software, thank you. Of course. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My corporate life is draining me. <laughs> <laughs> My head is a mush on the weekend. <laughs> and a booty back up for Monday. <laughs> it's rolling around. Comes every week. <laughs> so it's been really fun. Um, I mean, it's only been four days. And yeah. we all work well together. Sometimes I work in a cubicle. Sometimes I work in the conference room with them. Yeah. We all I have mean, different projects. It's been good. Everyone has their own jobs that have been outlined. So it's like good because each person has, you know, their lane that they stick into. And then you come together in the middle to be collaborative and then, you know, participate in citywide events, obviously. And it, literally. And we go to lunch together. That's really nice. And you seem to really all have bonded, get to know each other. In four days. It's been quick. And you're all from Cleveland. So I also mm -hmm. think that that helps. Just kind of that hometown advantage, if you will. Wow. <laughs> That's a sports reference.
That yeah. was that was good for you. That was the sports reference. Now let's take it to this weekend, more present day action. You talked about the roof party being one of your bows. That was mm -hmm. last night. We also went to another Guardians game. <laughs> you We're follow us so on Instagram. Super sporty. Super, super sporty. We went to another baseball game and honest to God, like I my thirst has not been quenched yet. Like I would like mm -hmm. to go to another one this week. I feel like I still have a lot more baseball games in me for the rest of the summer. We're gonna have to work out the whole heat situation because it's only getting hotter. It's only getting hotter and our clothes seemingly only seem to be getting thicker thicker we showed up in denim <laughs> and not like, like a light breathable target denim no 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 we were in alice and olivia denim which is like a tar super weighted <laughs> yeah i would like to speak to alice or olivia well, I don't think when they were constructing these rompers and uh, jean dress, they had any intention of girls running around a uh, baseball stadium. I just no. don't think. I think it was more of like a brunch luncheon scene that they had in mind. But um, because we were going to the baseball game and then we were going to the going away party right after, we needed something that would work for both. So we showed up overdressed to each event. <laughs> correct. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> um, and but the game was fun. Okay, so um, this time at the game, I yes talk about it we got stadium nachos we did because I wanted the stadium nachos last time we got the barrio barrio like Mexican food so like I said last week the barrio not this I'm not trying to start a fight okay but I agree um, with you. no I know what you're gonna say and I agree the with barrio you. nachos were authentic nachos you're using the wrong <laughs> word it was more fresh I would say okay that's what it I is. guess yeah gourmet gourmet but sure, it was more restaurant style, gourmet, fresher ingredients than the stadium, stadium loaded nachos. I will okay, give you that. Okay, so um, Emily was like, I want a stadium nacho. And I was like, totally. Like, we got Barrio last time. Let's get the stadium this time. I said this begrudgingly, by the way. We get in line. And as we're in line for probably 35 minutes. It wasn't that long. It was like 16 minutes. It was longer than that. No, it wasn't. I actually tracked it on my phone. Okay. Yeah. Um... We watched how these stadium nachos were made, and I <laughs> absolutely vile, vile. <laughs> Never get my nachos. I watched nachos one of them take a bag of melted <laughs> cheese and just dump it into a vat of other plastic, and then pour it on the chips. Yeah, no, honest to God, I can't believe we like ate and the I was, nachos. Ah! <laughs> oh my God, this is so good. I love these. And I love that you get to make decisions this week. <laughs> well, you had your chance last time. No, never again will I be getting loaded nachos. Or I'm not going to be ever, I don't want to watch them making the nachos because I think that whole experience tainted the I don't know what you were expecting. I told you it was melted Velveeta in a bag. <laughs> it was giving like, I, I just was really shocked. Lunchroom in the 60s. Like squeezing out the oh, cheese. Whoa. No, guys, seriously, don't do it. <laughs> don't do <laughs> it. I, I can't explain. How no one should be getting these. And I, we love like sports food. We love stadium food. Like I would have just parked it if we had more time and gotten the hot dogs, the pretzels, the popcorn. So I was, and I don't know why we arrived at the nachos. Like we you just wanted so them. many. You wanted them too. You brought them up first. Yeah, because I wanted the barrio nachos. Okay. I didn't want. It was a lesson learned. I had the plastic cheese. I had nachos. to go about it the hard way. I would have not stopped coming after you about getting the stadium nachos all summer because Lord knows we're planning on going a lot more to a lot more baseball games. So we got it over with, and we weren't even there for that long. So it was fine. The other option was like you could get steak, chicken, or crab. <laughs> I was like, I don't have time in my week to get food poisoning from stadium crab. Like, yeah. I just, that's not my bingo card for right now. No. And like, why did the stadium even have crab? <laughs> like, where did the crab come from? Like, loaded the crab! <laughs> loaded the crab over here on the kiosk! For the loaded nachos, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna need it. Yeah. Does that also come in a bag? I don't know. <laughs> like, did I also just dump in the crab? How old is this crab? I don't know. Like, what is going on? Um, that was also super concerning. They had like no napkins. Like it was just a whole. So we just got because then we, as we were standing, the longer we stood in line, the more we were like, "Well, I don't want that. I don't want that topping. I don't want that topping." Because it was just like getting weirder and weirder. So we just ended with Tostitos, basically, and Velveeta melted cheese. And then everyone, when we got back to our standing room, was like, "Why aren't you get any toppings?" I'm like, well, sir, because I'm nauseous. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that was our nacho journey. <laughs> 
And I got a stadium cup again, or a souvenir cup again. You did get a souvenir cup. Yeah. Where is that? Oh, it's at Claire and Connor's apartment. Yeah, you like washed it out and left it there. But I'm glad that you were reunited. It's really become a thing. And I was looking at other people who had um, souvenir cups. I saw like, more of them. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, like we get each other. They were mostly dads. Did you notice that? I did. Yeah, they were like all dads, which I thought was also funny. No, I not no. I was the first person who got you the souvenir cup. That felt so. like an attack. It was an attack. I just would like to know why there was only dads drinking the souvenir cups. <laughs> they probably wanted a little like you know memorable part of the night to take home with them. Right. Anyway, um, do you have your notes? You wrote down some questions. Yeah. Okay. So that was basically our weekend. Today we went up to our lake house and we checked on stuff and we just like laughed around. Yeah. That was pretty much it. That's it. Um, so based off of your questions, yes, um, I picked kind of two subheadings <laughs> to talk about today. So the first one is dating advice. Okay, this was a huge question that came through on the Bosun Company Instagram. And I want you all <laughs> to take this with a grain of salt mm -hmm. because we have run into issues previously about me talking about this. For real? Yes, for real. Oh. I was like literally torn apart. My God, this has taken <laughs> a very dark turn. No, I just, I'm not, I just wanted to give a disclaimer because some people like can't take a joke or oh. take it the wrong way. And they think that us talking about something that's very normal, which is being social and young as we are desperate and only <gasps> looking for. Oh my God. Oh, you weren't there. <laughs> no, this is the first time I'm ever hearing about this. When we were in Dallas, we, Mom and I recorded a podcast, and it was a week where there wasn't a lot going on, mm -hmm. um, and so I was just telling a funny story about how I saw a cute boy at the UPS store, and some person write a small novel, a prologue, Whoa. and just ripping apart, like, you're so desperate, all you want to do is get married, like, why don't you go and, like, get a life, what? and so, and it was the night before my meet and mingle, and I couldn't fall asleep, and, like, she completely missed the point that it was just a funny story. I was just then very cautious about what I was saying, because I was, like, clearly, like, you can't take a joke. But, I mean, right. it's not that deep at all. It's no, not that serious. It's really not. It's I really not. have a life. I'm looking at it. No, I have a, a, a fabulous life. A vivacious life. No, as we all know, and I don't even need to say that because, I mean, it goes without saying. Anyway, with all that being said, I am assuming that the majority of the people who are listening to the podcast understand that we are just young, fun girls talking about our social life and funny dating stories. And that's all it is. Nobody is looking to, you know, settle down. No, but just like be upset about this. Like, oh, oh, you know right. what I'm saying? Like, right. <laughs> that also. <laughs> so, with all that being said, with a grain of salt and pepper. <laughs> what, what, whatever happened to pepper? Yeah, why are we leaving pepper out? Yeah. You know, cayenne pepper is just really good for you. So, Seriously. Um. Okay. I have two pieces of nuggets of gold to kind of pass on to you. Mind you, I am alone. So. <laughs> So just like don't like you know maybe don't follow this advice. Right. Number one, don't be afraid of rejection. Wait, what are you talking about? Dating advice. Oh, okay. So we're actually back to that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> date, so people were asking. That's right. People were asking for our dating advice. Yes. Yeah. So number one is don't be afraid of rejection. This is easier said than done. Well, that's yeah. I mean, I think that can go without in all aspects of your life. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten rejected. <laughs> is that you are not afraid of rejection and you are fearless in wow. a lot of different situations whether it be pilates um whether it be i can't think of it, volleyball you know you just kind of dive in head first so you really are not afraid of rejection in any capacity you just want to you know have a party and have fun what else did you put down for okay. here um yeah i okay so i'm constantly putting myself out there you probably will get rejected but just move on like it has nothing to do with you just move along <laughs> <laughs> right on down the road. Move on. Okay, number two. So even though you're constantly getting rejected, you don't want to settle for the first person who accepts you. So true. I want to bring a different perspective into the light because I think it's something that we don't necessarily <laughs> always talk about. Your perspective is like, stay at home. You know, don't, don't date anyone. <laughs> Just wait for them to come to you. I think something that's very normal and like not at all talked about is like dating is, it takes practice. And I feel like we are kind of, okay, do you have a problem? It's just that I told you this <laughs> two weeks ago. I'm and I said, simply reiterating. Okay, uh, but it's just like, 
I instilled this in you. I know, like, I know. You I, have to practice. No, I, I'm literally trying to tell them what you, I have come to the realization that it is such a real thing. I have not heard people talking about this. Okay. Okay. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but you say it like you thought of it and like. Okay, do you want credit? Yeah. That's Mom, you, and the entire extended family has said that this is, it's practice. And it is a real thing. My point <laughs> is that I never realized how you can actually get better at dating. Mm. That was my whole point. Like, point. And, and that some people are really good at it, and some people, like myself, are very bad at it. And, and as you get better, you see more results. That's all I was trying to say. Elizabeth is definitely a lot more open to just striking up a conversation with a complete stranger, whereas I am much more reserved. I don't start conversations with men. Just reserve. If, I, if I'm not interested, I cannot find a way in me to become interested. Elizabeth is the complete opposite. She will talk and she just treats it like practice. Okay, go ahead. Probably two and a half, three weeks ago. Guys, it was rough. <laughs> like I would just be trying to like, talk to like this random person, the arborist, yeah. at the local watering hole, and like Emily just couldn't mm -hmm. form words. Because I was like, I'm not interested in this person. But it doesn't matter. It right. doesn't matter. I know, and I know that now. they're not interested in I them. know that now. It's just practice. It's just practice. So, it, you know, it's been a, a slow progression, and I was, in Nashville, I was able to take some of the tools that we have learned together mm -hmm. during our modules and kind of apply it to just a complete stranger, you know, that I will never see again. And this is just conversation, you know, just, oh, hey, like, how are you? Yeah. <laughs> what is your name? Uh, yeah, where are you from? <laughs> yeah, stuff like that. Um, and it, it is, you do have to practice and train. And so if you are finding that it is difficult for you, or you're in a city or you're, you know, recently single or post-grad life or whatever, wherever you are, don't beat yourself up so much because you do need to get better at it. And some people are just, like, you're a natural. I also think it is easier for somebody who is not interested. A third party. Right, yeah. exactly. It is much easier. But you, I've seen great results very yeah. quickly. You're pretty coachable. Oh, people were asking, like, what is the dating scene like in Cleveland? I cannot stress to you how easy it is. You, you literally just need to leave your house. You just need to leave your house. You just need to leave your house. Every time we go out, there's... Teaming, like it's so easy to date in Cleveland. It's actually like kind of, I feel like a little bit of a hidden gem here. Just walk out of the house. That's all you gotta do. Yeah, put your shoes on, get going. Yeah, just go to a central location where you know there will be a lot of people and your, your odds go up. <laughs> just basically. I don't know how much your odds go up, but they <laughs> like go up. A certain percentage, yeah, <laughs> they're gonna go up. So kind of piggybacking off of dating is how to find friends post-grad yes grad <laughs> pre-grad <laughs> how do you find them yeah exactly where are they this was another great question and something that we've also been focusing on because it does take effort effort this is a, a very big theme throughout this entire dating finding friends it is a part-time job it's something you have to stick with and you need to be consistent with it takes a lot of effort it doesn't just happen you've got to leave your house i can't stress that last point enough to you right you have to leave the house but i would definitely say like joining groups that are doing um activities together uh i'm part of a couple like facebook groups yeah that host events which is also really specifically helpful. for women specifically for women and we have gone to all of those and they've been really fun and we've been able to connect people volunteering honestly is a huge way to meet people claire and connor claire started off being very um, involved in the american cancer society and she's met a lot of great people through that and, and she's also part of um NAOP, which is yes. a real estate group yes so something like specific to your career or your work is also another great option um because that's an easy conversation starter to you know if you're working on the same thing yes. you're in the same field and also like just making time for both like there's separate separate things making time for good girlfriends yeah. to go and do stuff and then obviously like yes dating is important but you need both of them right you can't just have one like it's it's a well-balanced life um my tip was be the initiator. Yes, make plans first. You have to make plans, reach out to them. If you see them once, DM them. If you don't, like get their number, talk to them afterwards. A follow-up goes a long way. A follow-up does go a long way. And also like lean into those mutual friends. Mutual friends 
are there for a reason. They, they, they are, have the world go round. Absolutely. They're the middleman. And you know what? They're doing their most. They're yes. breaking their backs connecting people. Yes. And I have even found like one of my friends, you know, it's like invite her coworkers and then they come and they bring friends. So you just have to use the network that you are in currently and, and soak out a, as much as possible. Because you're going to get along with one, two, three, four, all of them. You're going to find right. somebody that you like and have common interests, especially if you're all in a similar city, you have that in common. So 100%. I just think that also, I think that doing activities is a very, it's, I like it better than just like, Oh, let's just go to lunch. You know, like that's also, that's fun. First, I love to go to dinner and stuff, but doing things together, I feel like is another great way for people to like become closer, like going on walks and like we're going to a, um, flower making and wine night in a couple weeks. Oh, yeah. So just like, I don't know, doing stuff other than sitting around and like drinking and having a, a meal. Because also I feel like if you're like, oh, like let's just go out together, then you're like, you know, there's that panic when you're out and like there's nothing to talk about. Yeah. With like a new friend. Right. That's a panicky feeling. So if you have an activity. Baseball games. Like that one time, like it was just yeah. so fun with, because you know, you can get up, you can walk around. There's an activity for everyone to kind of look. There's a purpose for you being there. Yeah. I don't know. I just think that that kind of takes the pressure off if you are with new friends. So those were two questions that came in a lot on the Instagram. A lot of other questions, but what were they? I feel like we kind of addressed that. It was just like overall catch up stuff. Dating practice. I think you, everyone needs to put a little bit less pressure on themselves and just give yourself the summer. That's what I'm doing to just practice dating because if you don't get yeah. better at something, like you said before, the first person who rolls around, you're like, Oh sure. This works out well. Does it? But I don't know because we didn't go through the first lesson and the second lesson. And the, so also the summer is the best time to be dating because everyone's outside. It's so easy to just find people. We have the sunshine on our side right now. Like December, you're going to have to get bundled up. You're going to have to trudge into a bar you know, it's just harder and everyone's wearing beanies in the winter and yes. you're covered up, you're in darker clothes. Maybe it's just like a, a Midwestern Cleveland thing, but in the winter. Um, no, but I agree. Take advantage of the summer, you know, go to things. Sporting events is a really great way to meet people, guys and girls. If you're in a relationship and you want more girlfriends, like take these same lessons and apply them. Always growing, always learning. Mm, one day at a time. Um, okay, so time after time, time. I was if you fall, I will catch you. I will find you. I was out to the coffee this week with time. like my good childhood friend and her mom, and we were talking about the podcast, mm. and she was like, "Elizabeth has a really good voice." Oh my! <laughs> no, I don't. And I was like, honestly, the microphones are just really good. No, <laughs> like I, I couldn't have a worse voice. If you I tried. do have a good voice. Okay, so I think that's all that we have to talk about for this week's episode. Be sure to follow Bose and Company podcast too. Um, you know, be up to date with the latest inside jokes throughout the week. We try <laughs> the latest inside jokes, you know, our clicks. Right. Yeah. I just feel like there's certain keep up to date so you don't get you know lost. So you don't get lost. You know, we got to keep up. There's a lot going on this summer and things are always changing. But we're doing like more of like the niche inside. I don't know little things that we talk about on the podcast on the Instagram because like it's kind of getting confusing with like the main Instagram. And also be sure to check out my new line of merchandise on my website, In Good Company. Mm -hmm. Available to shop at myonbose.com. Elizabeth, do you have anything else to share with us today? Just that it's a pleasure as always to be in your presence and to be with this microphone. Oh my gosh, I loved it. This was such a good, cozy Sunday night vibe to catch up. I feel like we're all on the same page and moving forward, we can just feel a little bit more organized. And together with a sense of community. Um, with that being said, we hope you all have a fabulous start to your week. Always thinking of you. And remember that everything is in fact, say with me, better with a bow. Bye-bye now.